be the person people would die to be around, people would die to be with you, instead of the person that want to be picked. Instead of the pick me, pick me please. So pick me, choose me, love me. No, you don't need anybody to pick you, like you pick yourself. Women, we tend to over justify ourselves. Sometimes you just say, no, I can't. That's it. You don't need to expand on the reasons why you're saying no. Hello, my beautiful darlings. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day today and thank you so much for watching. Today, we're going to talk about how to stop being too nice. Ladies, it is true that it's good to be nice. It's good to be a nice person. I'm not saying otherwise. Of course, you have to be kind. You have to be nice. You have to be considerate. I'm always preaching for good manners and being a good hearted person in general. But there is a limit with being too nice and feeling like you can't say no to people and people can take advantage of that. It can sometimes prevent you from taking care of yourself and thinking about yourself. You will in that case neglect yourself for others. Low self-esteem and low self-worth will make you feel the need to overcompensate sometimes. And overcompensating is when you are being too nice, is when you have to prove your value to others, when you feel the need to prove your value and to prove like, see, I'm a wonderful person, I'm nice, and you overcompensate. And actually in that case, it has have the opposite effect of what you want. Most people are not really charmed by it because it's too much. You help, you give, it's in your nature, but it gets taken advantage of. Being too agreeable also sends the signal to other people that you don't really have your own opinion and they can step on you and decide for you. As we all know, nice girls finish last. So if you want to know how to stop being too nice and being taken advantage of, keep on watching. But first, just wanted to let you know that if you want to see more of my content, I talk about fashion, femininity, old Hollywood glamour, seduction, dating, and anything to make you become a highly feminine lady. And to break your confidence, fear visage on the channel, the link is down below. And also follow me on my Instagram and on TikTok. So let's get this straight. Let's get the differences between being nice and being too nice. Being nice is having manners, being considerate, being compassionate, greeting people, helping others, making friends and family feel special around you, and being a good listener and a good person in general. Being too nice is feeling like you cannot say no. It is not speaking up when you don't like how you're being treated or how you're being spoken to. It's giving too much to people after you even learn that people want to use you. It's going above and beyond for the people that actually do the bare minimum. Society have a tendency to say to women to be nice, to be kind, to be polite, and to never really say no, to never be, be really assertive. When you think about assertive, you think about men, you think about masculine energy, right? But you do need that type of masculine energy sometimes, even as a woman, even as a feminine lady. And you need also the darker feminine, as I always say, the dark and the light feminine. The dark feminine is the energy that you have in you that really bring out all your boundaries and all your confidence. Like, I'm that woman. You don't treat me like however you want. So the number one thing that you need to do is to learn to put yourself first. And I did a whole video about how to learn to put yourself first. But this is a real thing. You have to stop being guilty to put your needs before the need of others. Instead of putting your needs in the back burner, do what's best for yourself before extending yourself to other people. As they say in the plains, you have to put your oxygen mask first before helping others, right? Make sure everything in your life is going on right before you decide to really help someone else or be there for someone else. You have to, you yourself have your life been going on well. You have your bills paid before you help someone else with money, for example. Make sure you are feeling good, you're feeling rested, you're not feeling sick or overwhelmed or stressed or anything like that. And you did everything you needed to do before giving time to others. Because I noticed like giving time to other people, giving you energy, it's an exchange of energy. Every time you see somebody, every time you even talk to somebody, it's an exchange of energy. You're giving your energy to somebody and it can be extremely draining to give your energy to somebody. And that's why also when you have a lot of people being too nice, being giving too much, they are waiting for things in return. They're waiting because they give too much. So they're waiting for the same in return. And most people 
are not really worthy of all of that. You have to make sure that people are worthy. In that way, you're not needy of the reciprocation of others. So for example, in a relationship, when you put yourself first, you're actually less needy in front of the man because you already put in your need first. You didn't put him on a pedestal. You didn't put his needs on like the pedestal and him first. And actually men don't really like that because they feel like they didn't really deserve it. So they don't understand why you put him, his needs first. It doesn't make any sense. You should be the one putting your need first. For example, you need to see him for dinner and you know what? Mm, no, I need to go actually. I have to wake up early. This is putting your needs first. This is putting a certain boundary, but it has nothing to do with him and attacking him or not liking him. On the contrary, you spend a wonderful time with him, but you know, you have some things that you need to do. And actually he will respect you more when you do that because you're less needy, you have your life. All your life is not centered around him or all your life is not centered around pleasing other people. When you see your friends, you don't say like, oh yes, let's, let's do this. Like don't just follow what they're saying and saying yes to everything. You have the right to say what you want to do at what time you're available and you have the right to be busy. You have the right to have a life. In that way, you're not waiting for him to reciprocate on all of the efforts you did towards him. I would say the opposite. Here on this channel, we want to be high value women. We want to be princesses. We want to be treated like true queens. So a queen, what does she do? What does she do? She's not just giving everything immediately. No, he has to prove and he is the one giving actually men are givers women are receivers also when you don't give yourself too much you don't feel bad about yourself it really has an impact on your confidence and on your self-esteem when you give yourself too much because that means that your own value your own energy and your own presence is not that big of a deal it's not that expensive and i did a whole video on how to make your energy and your presence expensive. I will link it below. When you give yourself too much, that means that you don't really value what you have because what you have is really precious. Your own presence, your own presence on a date is enormous, ladies. You have no idea. First of all, we are women. We are the prize. We are the most desired thing on the planet. You have to remember that. When you are a woman, a feminine woman taking care of herself, anytime you go somewhere with a man, he is seen as more valuable just because he's with you. There is a scientific actually study about that. They studied it and men appear more attractive when they are with a woman. This is really fascinating. So that means that your own presence, just you being here, already adds value to him. You don't need to do anything, just your presence. Even you responding to his text is enormous value towards him. That means that he will be valued in society because he's validated by a woman. And in that way, boundaries are extremely important to feel safe because when you put boundaries, you know that you protect yourself with these boundaries. You know that you won't feel bad. You won't feel resentful because sometimes when you give yourself too much, you feel resentful towards yourself. You're angry at yourself for giving yourself too much to that person, too much time, too much energy to that person when actually they don't reciprocate. But when you put all your needs first and if someone turns out to be a disappointment, at least you did what you needed to do first. And you will not in that case feel helpless or hopeless because the person did not reciprocate. Next, we have be careful of the desperate energy. Desperate energy is the least attractive energy in the world for men, for women, but especially for women because the feminine is all about confidence. And even a man, you, don't, you wouldn't want a man to have a desperate energy. That's the same. You want a man that's confident also. You don't want to be arrogant, okay? But you want to show that you are valuable and you have value to offer. People being too nice, they overcompensate for something. You have to work on your self-esteem in that way. Sometimes some women feel like their partner is out of their league and they have to overcompensate to keep that person in their life. Or on a date and you feel like you have to overcompensate because the guy in front of you is not doing much. 
So when the man is not really doing that much energy, he's not giving much of himself, you have a tendency to want to overcompensate his lack of interest by you trying too much. And it's the opposite. You should actually pull back because you stay in your feminine energy no matter what. When you have this desperate energy, it's like you're putting the men as the prize and on the pedestal instead of you. Be the person people would die to be around, people would die to be with you, instead of the person that want to be picked. Instead of the pick me, pick me please. So pick me, choose me, love me. No, you don't need anybody to pick you, like you pick yourself. Your mindset is extremely important and that's why I'm doing so many videos about mindset because I love fashion, I love feminine energy, but the mindset and the confidence that you need to feel inside, you need to feel like a catch. That is like the most important thing if you want to succeed in life, you want to have a beautiful love life, you want to have a beautiful even career. Define your personal boundaries and communicate them assertively. Let others know what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. Be firm but respectful in enforcing your boundaries. You can have boundaries in a very feminine way and still be firm and still be like assertive but still being respectful to other people and keeping your calm. Make a list of the boundaries that you don't like or that you don't tolerate and boundaries are different from different people. Your boundaries can change with your experiences so you have to pay attention to what triggers your mind, what triggers you. Like sometimes he can say something in a joke and it can trigger you but somebody else would not be triggered by it. So it's, boundaries are very personal. You have obviously some basic things. Is he a gentleman? Is he nice? Is he being late? Is he being loud? Is he being offensive towards you? What do you expect also out of a man? What are your expectations? Learning to say no. Being even comfortable saying no. By saying no constantly and consistently, you empower yourself. You know what, Mike, that'd be great. You? No. That requires a lot of work, I have to say, because it's not in our nature as women. Women are more agreeable than men in general. It's really not in our nature to constantly say no and be more assertive. It's like men are better at this. The more you say it, the more you will feel comfortable. Oh, do you want to go to dinner tonight? Oh, no, I won't be able to make it. I have something that I need to do. And also, don't try to over justify yourself. Women, we tend to over justify ourselves. Sometimes you just say, no, I can't. That's it. You don't need to expand on the reasons why you're saying no. If people are offended by you saying no, I mean, they're probably not really healthy people. The right guy, the right friends, the right people will respect your boundaries, will respect the fact that you're saying no, and will have no problem with that. They will say, it's okay, we can do that another time. And it's a way of respecting yourself, respecting your core values and your own boundaries. And to know that your goal is not to make other people feel bad. Like my goal is not to make others feel bad. Like not being too nice, it's not about being cold or being distant. No, you can still be charming and nice and respectful and smiling and having fun with people, but it's about just having the ability to say no when you need to, having the ability to stand up for yourself when you feel like you're mistreated. It's about preserving and protecting yourself rather than rejecting others. People with mental issues and narcissists will actually want you to be more of a people pleaser and being too nice because in that way they can manipulate you. So they don't like people saying no or having firm boundaries because in that way they cannot really get what they want. And that also protects you from those kind of people because they will not see you as a target. Next point is you need to also recognize when people exaggerate. I would say do not do the most before people prove themselves worthy of you. At first you observe and sometimes even in a relationship or even with friends that you know for a long time, sometimes if they exaggerate a little bit much and you feel uncomfortable, you have an intuition and you feel it, you can take a step back and observing. Observing is always a good thing because you're not giving, you're observing. Next also we have learn to receive. Receive, receive, 
receive. I have a full video about how to learn to receive with your divine feminine energy. It is irresistible actually. Everybody loves when somebody is good at receiving. When you offer something to somebody, okay, you want this person to have a big reaction. I just, I love when a person have a big reaction when I offer something. Like a couple days ago, it was my mother's birthday. So, so I ordered her a beautiful stunning dress online and I want to see her reaction. That's the pleasure that I get from giving. It's the reaction of the people and the ability to receive, like the their face, they're happy, they say thank you. When you accept the gift, you honor the giver. Apparently there's a study that says that people like you more when they do a favor for you. And it totally makes sense because when people do something for you, they feel useful, they feel competent, they feel appreciated, they feel seen, uh, everything, you know, they feel validated as a human being, like as a good action, good human being. And everybody wants to feel like that. And especially men, they love to feel competent they love to feel powerful and and the more you receive the more you accept help and you're not gonna be too nice in that way because you're not the giver you're not giving too much of yourself you're more closer to your divine feminine thank you so much for watching my beautiful darlings I hope it was helpful for you let me know in the comments what you think and if you have experiences with being too nice if you have some stories or some bad experiences with you being more too nice a people pleaser and also don't forget to follow me on my instagram and on tiktok don't forget to subscribe and until next time i'm giving you so many kisses and i love you so much ladies was up to her old tricks. <laughs> <laughs>